Hey, hello and welcome to this new tutorial by Flowmotion. And today we are bringing it back to the roots of Flowmotion as well as After Effects. Because today I'm going to show you how you can melt and liquefy a text. So it's all about tile animations, which is for me still one of the main reasons why to jump into After Effects. So let's just do that, jump into After Effects. So in here, let me quickly tell you the steps that we're going to do today. At first, we have to create a text and make it liquefied. That means if the letters get closer together, they should interact like ice cream or like blood or slime in my examples. So as a second step, we need to animate it so that it looks like the letters are actually melting. And as a last finalizing step, we will then add a look to it so that it looks three-dimensional. So let's directly start by creating a new composition and I'll just go for the default, hit OK. And by the way, if you like something in this tutorial, just pause the video, click the subscribe button and write me in the comments down below why you like it or maybe why you don't like it and I'll try to answer each of your comments. Let's just create a text and call this maybe cream and I'll just make this text a little bit thicker and I will also work on the tracking of this text. So the tracking is basically the distance between the letters. So I'll just bring them closer together so that they are almost touching each other. And then I go to align and center this. Now I'm going to pre-compose this text and call it text because later on when we have our final result we can always go into that composition and just change the text and everything will update, which is super cool. So now we wanna extend the borders of the letters so that they are starting to interact with each other. And therefore, I'm just blurring them out a little bit. And I'm searching for the Gaussian blur, bring it onto the composition and just increase it a little bit. Maybe just like 16 for my example, but depending on your font and your text, this could be a different number. Now I wanna make this look sharper again. So therefore I'm going to basically crop all this feathering. And I can do that with a choker. There are actually many methods to do that. I can show you two of them. I can choke this. You see that it gets smaller, but now they don't interact only in here. You can already see something happening. So let's reset the choker and go into negative direction at first. You see, now they are somehow touching and then I'm duplicating this and going to the other direction. And now I can just play with this. Cool. As I told you, I could also get rid of the choker and use the levels effect for this and simply crash the alpha, you see? And that will give you the same effect. But I'll go with the choker for this one. I'm actually going to cut those effects, create a new layer, new layer, adjustment layer, and paste the effect on here. So later on, everything I'm doing with the animation, I have the adjustment layer on top. So this is just to liquefy. And I'll turn that off for now. So next, I'm duplicating the text because now I want to create some melting lines that go down here. And for that, I am using the transform effect. And I bring out a ruler by hitting Control R just to see where all the letters should melt. And let's just scale this up, but only in the height. And we can play with the anchor point. And now you see that we are basically only stretching out the letter from the bottom, which is perfect. And don't worry about those pixels here because Remember, later on we are going to blur this anyways and choke it. But let's create a quick layer. The color doesn't really matter. And I'm just bringing it up here, bring it above the text and just use it as an alpha mat. Actually an alpha mat inverted. So this is what we have here. And I'm actually bringing this beneath the text and call this maybe the melting text. And we can get rid of the guideline by simply dragging it out of the window. And when we turn on the liquify, you see it gets liquefied. So now comes the animation part and this is super easy. I'm just going to create a really big mask. I'm creating a new layer, call this our animation, hit OK. I can hide it for now and then I just draw a mask in like a liquid shape. Now quickly reposition it over here. Set a keyframe by hitting M, go forward, and then I'm simply dragging this down so it covers everything. And if it doesn't cover everything, I can mark all those points and simply bring them down. And what I do with that animation, 
just for the sake of it, let's fill it so we can see it better. I bring it on top of our text and use it for the blending mode as a Denzel Alpha. Now you can see it kind of cuts in between the layers, which doesn't look that good at the moment. But again, we turn on the liquify button and you can directly see what this is doing. So, but to get this to a next level, we can animate our melting text. So we set a keyframe for the scale height and bring it beneath our last keyframe here. So because once the text appeared, we want it to smear down and then we reset it to 100. In that way, this happens. Maybe make this an easy ease keyframe by right clicking on it, easy ease, and then it's just adjusting those keyframes. And again, we turn on the liquify button. Okay, we have liquefied our text and animated it. Now let's make this thing look cool. So maybe we go for a slimy color now. And I'm just going to pre-compose all of this and call it our liquid text and hit OK. And by the way, you can still tweak this way, way more and make this look way more convincing. So if you go more into details for the mask, you can make thinner strokes and thinner blood lines or slime lines. Oh, quickly, what you can do, for example, beneath the E or the A or somewhere there, there would be something that the slime isn't moving over it or the ice cream isn't moving over it. So you can create a new layer and call this like the extra effects. Again, I'm filling this with a color so you can see this better, hide it for now. And let's say I want to have like an extra effect. Here is something. And also here is something. And maybe here's another thing going on. Okay, so what can I do with that? I simply bring it beneath the animation and make this a silhouette alpha. So this will stencil through everything. You see? This is super, super organic. And you could also have like a big portion of slime coming down and have the letters being subtracted. So the slime is just going over the letters. And again, you can go crazy with this. Whatever you paint here will have effect on your final result. Maybe one thing over here. Yes, there we have our cream. So back into our comp one where we have the liquid text. For now, as I told you, we want to fill it and make it look like slime. And now comes the key feature that we want to work on to make this look convincing. And this is an effect called CC glass. I'll just bring it out here. So by default, this looks a bit odd, but let's play with this. What is this actually doing? We can define a bump map and a bump map defines the area on the image where there's going to be height and where there's light hitting a rim and so on. So where do we want to have light and where do we want to have the height of the glass? Of course, we just want to have it at the outlines of our text here. So we choose this exact same text to also be our bump map, which is actually done by default. So let's turn this on again. And we want the properties not of the lightness, but of course we want to use the alpha because the alpha defines the border of our letters. So let's change this to alpha. And now we just have to play with the height as well as the displacement. and you see that we get this three-dimensional look. Let's also play with the light direction. And you see, you can really now start to create something that is more slimy and you can also go into all the shading options because for example, the specular is just the really bright highlights and they can really help make this look like more plastic or more slimy. And I really like that. So let's quickly create a background. Let's just make it red because this complements the green real good. But then, of course, we add a vignette or something to it that it's not that hard to see. Maybe this is just a little bit too red now. So go into the solid settings. Okay. And so this is what we have at the moment. So let me just give you two more tips for the end of this really fun text animation tutorial. The first thing is you could add multiple 
instances of the glass effect. Just duplicate it and play with the settings here. Maybe crank up the diffusion for this one and change the light direction. So this gives you just some more variation for your effect. A last thing, because I wanted the slime to be more dramatic and to really burst through the background. So what I have done to create that, I've simply duplicated this. Let's call this our shadow because this really helps to sell that the slime is coming through the wall or basically it makes it just stand out more. So I create a shadow by tinting this and you can do that with a fill or however you like it. I'll just make it black for now and add a radial fast blur to it. Maybe position it somewhere over here. It looks strange at the moment, I know, but let's crank up the amount and this defines how long our shadow is. Still not convinced? Then just enable the liquid text again. And now you can really play with the radial fast blur. And by the way, the further away it is from the text, the more directional it will look. And of course, this is too much. So you can just bring down the opacity a little bit. And isn't this just looking super, super cool? I totally love it. So last but not least, let's quickly go into our liquid text then into our text and just call this animation. And there we have our animation. Let's have a look at this. Just look how cool it looks when the slime goes around those obstacles here that we have defined. This is really looking so, so beautiful, even though it is slime, I know. So and this is already the end of this tutorial and I really hope that you learned something about procedural text animation and how to create liquid text. And if you learned something then feel free to hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment. Because in that way I can do way more of those tutorials and, and I really love doing those. For now I wish you a lot of fun creating melting text in After Effects. <laughs>